practice makes man perfect. Well, that's the general quote, right? That's what I think we all know as um, the whole quote itself. Like, you practice to become perfect. You practice to become perfect. But what you all don't know, which I realized recently, is that no one attains perfection well, except the supreme being. So what I want to say is practice doesn't make you perfect. Practice improves you or practice makes improvement that should be the right quote and that's the quote for today's video so practice makes improvement and you should look at practicing more to become better than you were an hour ago a day ago a week ago a month ago a year ago a decade ago that is what practice is supposed to make you look like i had a conversation with a friend and um, um, we ended up talking about something like the practice we've gone through is what's making us the amount of money you're making now. So imagine the amount of money you're making at the moment and think about the next five years. That is what practice sends you to. So it becomes better as time goes on. And, and as much as you're going to face a lot of challenges, you still have a lot of practice ahead. Just so that whenever or whatever situation you're faced with, you get to, you know, kill that situation and all that. In today's video, I will be talking about ways you can go about improving your retouching and practice should be one of them. I made a video, I made a similar video a couple of years back. I spoke about eight ways to improve your retouching, so, but I'm not going to put a number to it today just because I'm going to be saying it off my head, right? But the first, the first thing that has to do with improving your retouching is to, you know, subscribe to the channel first. <laughs> I know, I know, guys. Just make sure you subscribe to the channel before I get into today's video. Turn on the bell notification icon to get notified when I drop subsequent videos like these. And also leave down the comment section video just to let me know you guys enjoy content like this. And just give me a thumbs up just so that the algorithm helps to push my video to other people just so that they know that, yeah, this guy is producing a better content which will probably educate you, educate me, myself, educate the mass itself. All right, so I have, I have, I, I do teach. I, I teach you on YouTube, like you're saying. I teach masterclass one-on-one -on -one sessions and all that. And over my years of teaching, I think I've been teaching for a year now no two years now two years to be exact it, it's related to my professionalism so over two years now i have taught a couple of people and a couple i've taught a lot of people and i have realized certain mistakes one has to deal with um the kind of laptop or pc they are editing or the screens they are editing with the kind of images they are producing um you know what they use in editing what um, other accessories you use in editing like the mouse the trackpad the wacom tablet and what mood they are in when they are editing um yeah and so forth and so on and i've realized these mistakes that come with editing i have gone through these mistakes i have made sure to not repeat them but day in day out you know there are times you just fall back into repeating them and it's not bad it's actually good because you then get to reset yourself and start off afresh and that's what i think most of us should be able to do so let's just dive right into the first thing i want to talk about when it comes to um, improving your retouching the first thing you need to consider is the kind of screen you're editing with i edit with a dell xps and the screen here is an hd screen which isn't a 4k screen i i wish there was maybe you guys can buy me a dell xps with a 4k screen but then again, I edit with this screen and it's way better than the laptop I used to use, I think three or four years ago. I used to have an HP laptop and trust me, I have to tilt the screen to get the kind of contrast level or the gamma, the appropriate word is the gamma shift on the screen. I have to tilt it just so that I get the appropriate gamma shift to work with. And it wasn't my fault because that was what I could afford back then and I, I feel like people have similar issues uh, most of my people watching here on youtube i'm not saying you can't afford it if you have the funds just get a better one than the dell sps they are, they are better ones you can even go in for the so-called mac systems you know just to enjoy a bit of difference but 
cell phones these days even my my pixel 3 has a, a, a super amoled is this super amoled i'm not so sure but i know it's an amoled screen where it displays the appropriate colors i need the iphone displays appropriate you know smartphone these days are giving you better quality when it comes to colors and all that so why not just improve your laptop right something that you use to edit something that brings you um, um your daily bread either you buy a better laptop or you look for an external monitor i have an external monitor i use that to you know tether when i'm shooting but it's not as accurate as what i have here on my screen i know it's small but get yourself an external monitor which is quite affordable they are and it's funny enough the most affordable but a little bit quality um external monitors come from hp so i don't know why they produce you know not quality screens when it comes to their laptops so there's the hp is it ev or ep ep21 okay it's 24f yeah i remember 24ef i'm not so sure i'm just going to look for the links i'm going to leave them down in the description but you know after all that i've said if you still can't afford that and you still want to use the kind of monitor you're using sometimes even the monitor you use have a blue hint when it comes to hp monitors so far the hp monitors i've seen when it comes to the laptop they have this blue hint all over their screen right blue tint sorry blue tint all over the screen and it's not their fault i can't blame them it's the manufacturer's fault but what you can do to make sure your screen looks better is to know what colors you're dealing with and how best you can compare your screen to another device so most of the time i used to back then i used to use my phone i make sure i get the correct tilt for my appropriate gamma shift then i come to i'm using let's just dive right into my laptop i'm using a windows 11 right now so search then i go to calibrate display color then i go through this process right i've already calibrated but i'm just going to show you the process tap on next next then it shows you gamma too low this is what you see good gamma this is what you see gamma too high this is what you see so if i should tap on next as you can see my gamma is okay for me if i tilt the screen in any direction i still have the gamma i'm looking for right and i tap on next then they ask you to skip brightness and contrast i would want to talk about this in relation to the environment you find yourself in and um that being said you should always be near a window when you're editing not that your screen will be facing the window actually the back of your laptop should be facing the window and that window shouldn't be open you know you should have like a white curtain or something the idea is to have a white balanced light enter through the window just so that your eyes don't get affected when you are working on your screen either you get yourself a glasses to cut off the blue lights or make sure you have a daylight balanced light coming in from your window just so that your eyes don't falter when you're editing more on that in another point so i'm just going to skip brightness and contrast adjustments then you have this for color balance adjustment you get to see if your screen is too reddish this is what you get to see if it's too green this is what you get to see too blue too much red and blue too much blue you know it's there and the neutral colors this is what you are supposed to see so the moment you tap on next you are supposed to see the gray colors from before right so if you're not seeing that you have red green and blue channels to move like you have to move the slider to adjust your screen like i said for hp mostly it's hp monitors i've seen this on um i mean the screens for from their laptop um you have a lot of blues in them right you're trying to look for a warm screen my screen is warm enough for me but if your screen if your screen is not warm enough make sure you tackle the blue and the opposite or the composite or the complementary color for blue is yellow complementary color for green magenta complementary color for red is cyan you should know this by now if you've watched my videos on coloring all right so one minute up you would probably have to move the slider of the blue right and the more you warm it up the more you introduce some greens into the image right or i mean to your screen then you can adjust that with um the green slider 
and by adjusting that you probably see you can get to see a lot but a lot more reds in it then you can adjust that also then you know try and figure a way out to tone your um gray just so that they look grayish like what you saw before you came to this end right then after that you tap on next then you can see previous calibration and current calibration after you tap on finish you're going to see start clear tuner this helps you adjust um you know the sharpness value of the font you're going to see on your screen after the calibration it happens all the time right i've done that calibration i don't need to do it again so i'm just going to tap on cancel then you're good with that that should help you if you can't afford to get yourself an external monitor or um you know an appropriate laptop with a better screen mostly what i used to do back then is if i should get this i'll make sure i intel likes to give you their own version of their graphics command something right so i have this intel graphics command and i go in for a friend's phone probably an iphone back then wasn't an iphone pixel wasn't on that level yet right and i come to display and i go to color management then i just make sure i change the hues over here it's the same rgb but this time around you're looking at like i try and compare so i pull up an image on the side i compare the screen and i compare the same image on my phone then i do the adjustment then i get custom to it so that whenever i'm editing i know the kind of colors i'm getting but the only bummer to it is it doesn't work well on all other i mean on all or on other images that you have shot so you, you should you should find ways and means to either get yourself an external monitor adjust to the screen you're editing with and which is not the best by adjusting but it's what you have but all the same i would advise you to get an external monitor if your screen is shit or buy a better laptop like the dell xps or like the macbook pros okay going in into the second most important um, factor to consider to improve your retouching is to you know get yourself a graphics tablet i mentioned this in that video when i spoke about improving your retouching getting yourself a graphics tablet is very key i have seen people do magic with the mouse fine good i've seen people do great work with the trackpad but you don't get the same um you know experience the same kind of edits the same kind of um feel to your image when you're using a graphics tablet to edit imagine dodging and burning with pressure sensitivity trying to you know minimize the amount of um lightness you give to an image or the amount of darkness you give to an image and you're using um a mouse or a trackpad those two don't feel pressure all they know is they apply the click you've adjusted to or you've applied to it and it just brushes it off but with the graphics tablet you're looking at a very great pressure sensitivity i like to work with pressure sensitivity because it helps me minimize or maximize the kind of you know uh, um, adjustments i make on my image like let's just let, let me see let me pull up an image right so for an image like this i'm currently using the wacom graphics tablet wacom didn't sponsor this video but i love wacom a lot this is like my second wacom graphics tablet like the smaller one i'm just going to leave a link down in the description if you want one try and get yourself one it's small it's compatible i can move it around wherever i want this is the bluetooth version but i don't like using the bluetooth because it's kind of slow the connection so i'm mostly wired right so this is an image i shot with three lighting i did produce a behind the scenes video i'm going to link link it up here or down in the description go watch that on how you know this amazing image was produced so we'll talk more on post processing but this is just to show you an example of dodging and burning and if you've been with me on my channel and talking about dodging and burning you know i use curves in dodging and burning right so i have my graphics tablet disconnected when i i i pull up the settings then i make sure i'm in photoshop so this is the pressure sensitivity you can see the current pressure happening over here this is the pressure sensitivity when when i tap i don't know if you guys can see but if i just tap on it this way oh, where did it go 
all right so if i just tap on it this way this is the current pressure this is me applying too much pressure to it and this is me applying just a little bit of pressure you can change the tip feel right to the far end so the, the small pressure I apply you're not going to see it right and when i apply too much pressure i see it and this is me applying half a pressure if it was here that half a pressure will probably be somewhere here like you can see so i'm mostly somewhere here or here so i'm here and i'm fine with it right you can change key stroke options you can change the mapping to which you can you know um have the graphics tablets move all around on screen and it's fine that's not what we're talking about so here in dodging and burning i make sure i pick up my brush tool make sure i pick soft round pressure opacity and flow and make sure the airbrush sets and stand on then i'll send it to one let me quickly make an adjustment here so black and white turned on what am i looking for inconsistencies on the skin so reduce brush size paint 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 make sure the inconsistencies are looking even turn this on back to bend dot bend 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 right so let me quickly do a before and after before and after before and after this is me applying the minimal pressure the most minimal pressure ever right and this is me applying the hardest pressure ever you get to see the difference so this is the before and after before and after let me see if i can bring in my mouse right this is the mouse i have remove that slot this in you all know where we dodged and bent so somewhere here right now let me use the same thing and try and dodge this off it becomes quite difficult when dodging and bending with the mouse let's see before and after before and after do you see what i'm seeing I'm able to control the amount of pressure I apply when I'm using a graphics tablet but with the mouse I don't and it becomes overbearing and that is not what I'm looking for All right so getting yourself let me plug this back in getting yourself a graphics tablet always helps when you are editing so let's see run pressure opacity and flow dodge 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 before and after the amount of pressure i need is applied whenever and wherever i need it All right so let me turn this off zoom in able to you know move in the direction i want and not be restricted with the keza movement so before and after and i love my i mean i love using the graphics tablet it should be something you should look forward to if you want to improve your retouching okay so the next thing i want to talk about is post processing post processing is very key when it comes to editing this image you're seeing over here has been post processed before it came into photoshop so let me send you right into capture one right this is the before right i shot this image using the three lighting setup my key lights in front a hair light and a rim light with you know a bounce card underneath there so in a way it's four lights so this is what i have as an image straight out of camera this is the push processing software i'm using capture one to into one and this is what i'm supposed to see or this is what i saw when i was shooting the model this is how dark even my background was and this is what we get right most post processing softwares kind of change your image when you want to edit in lightroom you're not going to see this in capture one you're seeing this right and for me if you should seek for my advice I always use Capture One for um, beauty shots or beauty edits or 
you know anything that has to deal with beauty close-up makeup i'm always using capture one because i have more control over that i only use lightroom when i'm trying to you know try to be creative try not to keep the skin the way it is try to go overboard like over melanating the skin something like i don't even want to go to photoshop that is when i use lightroom and i also use it for full body shots so much shots i don't use lightroom for beauty edits which i don't advise that because capture one works best all the time so this is what i did here in capture one after getting this particular image you should know your ideas you should know i mean you should have a fair idea of what coloring will be applied to the image you should know the selective coloring you'll be doing you should know what you're removing from the image what you're adding what you're not adding what you're balancing or not and take note if i had a bad screen i wouldn't have achieved this i hope you get it so if your screen is good i know after turning on the after the first thing i need to do which is a new feature in the capture one thing to one is to make sure my icc profile is moved from generic to pro standard right to eliminate the reds in there which this is a personal preference you can leave it as generic and work your way around it but i like the pro standard and my white balance if i should hold alt on the keyboard or option on the keyboard this is where my white balance was right 5697 and cooling it down she is she's not really a dark skin model she's slightly fair more chocolate than dark chocolate so the light chocolate and the dark chocolate so that's why i moved it into this direction with the tint also then we're looking at the color editor also making sure i'm not with within those annoying greenish yellows but i'm within a toned red so this was happening in here in the basic you can see the hues of my reds that of my oranges the yellows and even the greens right then in the color balance i tried i tried warming everything up the highlights the mid-tones and the shadows then yeah that, that this is everything that happened in here the exposure settings you know i just moved a couple of things around just to make sure i have the right exposure then you should like i said you should know how you're going to work on your image i had an idea that the face was a bit too bright which was because light traveling when when you when you study the inverse square law you realize that whatever is closer to the light gets more light and the more light travels down the more uh, power you lose so obviously you're not going to get enough power around the neck region or the lower neck region so either i boost up the lightness over here with curves or i just reduce the brightness on the face just to match the skin and that's what's happening here that's what um, this mask is doing over here right so this is the before and the after so the idea the knowledge to move it from this i know people like i said i've taught people and i know people who have always edited from here like this is what they have they just fix some adjustments and they move from here and this is the coloring they're going to give to the clients and this is a makeup shoot so i'm trying as much as possible to maintain the makeup look what we saw when we shot and that's not what was even showing on the camera right so this is a general idea of what we saw when we were shooting and not this so knowing what to do or knowing the direction you're going when it comes to editing is very key which will improve your retouch and so post processing is very key and the software you use in post processing will kind of help improve your retouching so capture one for me capture one is for all beauty works and all products works and lightroom is for all full body shots and all outdoor images or um, somewhere shots and you know etc etc so that is my two cents on what will improve your retouch when it comes to post processing software and you know photoshop you can use any other photoshop photoshop is photoshop no matter where you go it's just that they've changed a couple of things the engines on how selection is done and all that but when it comes to the dodging and burning processes and all that you know it's still the same it remains the same and it will forever remain the same until maybe they produce a better one or a better way to you know go about researching 
so you can also add dodging and burning as a way to improve your retouching people don't know how to even use frequency separation so i'm diving right into the next one which is the techniques you use in editing i used to be a fanatic of frequency separation when i started you know i used to watch prince mason a lot so frequency separation was the ish then improving my craft i realized that dodging and burning was way better but dodging and burning takes more time i can tell you i almost spend like two or three hours on two pictures when it comes to dodging and burning sometimes i even go a whole week because you know trying to edit and make it come out perfect like i've used frequency separation is the goal going overboard messes the picture up going way less it depends on what you're working on right so knowing when to apply more knowing when to apply less is the key i would want to show you an image that i edited with um frequency separation i'm sure people might be thinking it was dodging and bending only but this also has a hint of frequency separation in it right so let me turn all these off right this is before that's coming from um capture one this is after adjustments i think i merged this i tried dodging and so i did some dodging and burning i was kind of frustrated then i merged it then i tried using frequency separation you know to even out the tones on the skin making it sure making sure i sent it in the direct like in the right direction and as you can see it's not overpowering my image like how you see other frequency separation being used wrongly frequency separation is destructive but here you realize i didn't use it in a destructive manner then i dodged and bend again just to make sure i sent it in the right direction i added my um highlights in the contour which i provided a video then noise then some adjustments and yeah this is what came out from using even frequency separation to make sure this image looked the way it looked when i posted on instagram so the right usage of frequency separation is key and like i said i use a graphics tablet so using a graphics tablet for that is perfect the next thing i will talk i will want to talk about is taking time off when you're retouching this is very key and i'm not going to lie to you it has happened to me majority of the time it has happened to my cinematographer people I have thought you know it's a problem and we need to fix it in as much as you're spending two hours editing doesn't mean you need to be behind the screen all the time editing no you need to take breaks have your phone beside you have a drink beside you you know just make sure you take your eyes off your screen whilst you're editing it helps a lot i've had great testimonies coming in from people who've watched the previous ones where you know when they edit they take their eyes off the screen they come back and they realize certain mistakes editing this particular image i actually had the same problem like i was trying to quickly finish editing it so much that i forgot that i need to take my eyes off the screen i think i had a call i stepped out i came back and i realized that i wasn't doing anything at all that is where the frequency separation came in actually and it helped me because taking my eyes off the screen made me realize other mistakes i didn't see whilst i was retouching earlier so make sure you take subsequent breaks it will help it doesn't matter if it increases your retouching time you shouldn't rush to edit which should also be key when you're editing because whenever you promise a client an edit make sure you give yourself ample time i promise my client seven days after they select their pictures seven working days right so i have a week and two days to produce the pictures and that's more time to be able to you know edit the pictures so take breaks it helps a lot what influences you when you're editing is the things you see the colors you see the environment you find yourself in imagine i was editing in a room or right now whilst i was editing and i blast a red gel all over the space i i experimented i did use a blue uh, i have a blue light in my room i turned it on and i retouched this image and right after i was done i could see different colors right i have a, i have a video on color correction we, I did an experiment where I placed two colors on different saturated values and it, it yielded different results. What's the answers I got from people were different. 
It's the same when it comes to editing. Imagine the room is filled with a whole lot of red lights. My image will be devoid of red because I will feel, I, 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 will, I will think I'm seeing a lot of reds on the image and I would have to remove it. But it's the red light influencing my image. If I had blue, that would be the same if I had green. So people editing in these colored rooms, when it comes to retouching, I, I sometimes really like I'm afraid for them because it doesn't help. The appropriate room to edit in is in a gray room. I don't edit in a gray room. I edit in a white room, which isn't advisable, but it's better than any colored room you find yourself in. When you're watching a movie, just turn it on fine. But when you are retouching or when you're editing, make sure you are in a neutral ground. Why do you think there's something called neutral gray? So in a gray room, in a black room, I even have that in my Photoshop, right? So this is the gray room for me on my Photoshop. This is the black room for me on my Photoshop. And this is the white. So I toggle amongst these three, um, you know, rooms just to make sure my image is in the right direction. But your environment you find yourself in. That is why earlier I spoke about having like a big window to which your screen or monitor or whatever it is will be just so that you have a daylight balanced light hitting your eye to be able to see exactly what you want to see when it comes to colors that's when you have appropriate screens and all right so make sure you have an appropriate environment you're working in make sure it's not a colored room make sure there are no colors influencing your eyes whilst you're editing otherwise you are going to come out with it will be the best but it won't be better last before i leave this is just the last it just came off right now the last thing before i leave is know the kind of edit you're doing when it comes to retouching don't waste time on a bridal image then try and make it perfect as this no bridal image i mean wedding bridal pictures like you go shoot bridal portraits at a wedding they are not the same as um bridal photography when it comes to shooting them in the studio this you're trying to show off the makeup the uh, the bride you shot during the wedding you're not trying to show off the makeup you're trying to show her in the makeup during that day and you don't have to overdo it you don't have to over edit it like this no it doesn't work that way i've seen a lot of people do that um, i've seen even top-notch people do that which is not advisable i did that when i started but now you know improving becoming better at the craft you realize that you don't have to make somebody look perfect on their wedding day you don't have to make somebody look perfect in the same way all you need to do is just make sure you're portraying the person in a nice way somewhere don't go overboard with the skin edit normal portraits don't go overboard if it comes to beauty like this there's no room for mistake when it comes to beauty because all you're doing is to try to make sure whatever it is you're trying to showcase whatever it is you're trying to communicate it's perfect right in front of you because all the references you've watched they all do the same but make it your own style that's what i'll tell you so i'm going to quote it again practice doesn't make anybody perfect practice makes improvements thank you so much for watching today's video i'm glad you enjoyed it i know so just leave me a thumbs up which is quite important for me make sure you share this video to your other friends just so that you know they get to learn these tips to improve their retouching my name is kojojo as usual and if you're new here thank you so much for coming to my channel make a point to subscribe before you leave if you are if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for supporting me make sure you share the video as usual and leave me a thumbs up down in the comment section box give me any comments make me know you're interested in videos like this and i'll produce more and like i said i'll leave a link to everything i mentioned down in the description just check them out thank you so much and i'll see you in my next video peace